great. Well, good to see everybody here, those of us who are here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Let's get a hymn book in the turn of number 75, Power in the Blood. Stand as we sing. Could you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you believe the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. and pride. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than stone? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin's stains are lost in its life-giving flood. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you lift daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Thank God for that wonder-working power. Amen. Well, it's good to be here on this Wednesday evening. Certainly good to see all of you here tonight. And uh, let's do pray for the service. Let's pray that God will meet with us and help us. And uh, the Lord will help each of us this evening. Amen. And uh, let's remember our missionaries, especially let's pray for them tonight. And uh, then let's remember all of our young people. Many have already gone back to school. Everybody else will be starting back next week. And uh, so let's pray for all of our young people in our church. And that God will keep his hand on them. Amen. Uh, throughout this school year. And pray for our school here at Victory, our staff, families, and all of our students and their families. And that the Lord will give us a great year. Amen. Any other requests tonight? Remember Sandra's mom in prayer, especially tonight. Amen. Any others? Amen. Any others? <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Yeah, let's do pray for our country. I tell you, it's a lot of mercy. I don't know what to say. All I know to do is pray. And uh, so let's just pray for all the leaders that God will help them. And God can change their heart, change their life. And uh, so let's ask God to touch them. Amen. And the Lord will help us just to be faithful to what we're supposed to do. I can't help what everybody else does, but I can help what I do. And so I know what I need to do, and so uh, just pray for one another that we'll just do what's right. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's all can. We'll let's gather around tonight and pray. And uh, then, of course, our revival is just uh, about a month away. And uh, so let's pray for our revival meeting coming up for Brother Fletcher and the Joy Heirs. And looking forward to them being here. And uh, I do remember uh, the Rochester family. Um, it's Scott's wife. It's Becky's uh, brother's grand's daughter. So it is. And uh, so they told him today there wasn't nothing else they could do for him. And uh, so we need to really pray for them. I, I, like Donna said, I couldn't imagine um, my daughter or my granddaughter going through that and having to deal with all that they have dealt with uh, over the last several, several months. And uh, so let's pray for them tonight. Amen. Many other families. I'm, uh, and it's sad when you think about it, but there's probably a lot of other families going through different situation that's, that's probably about the same all over the country and you never tell them what people are dealing with and even right here in our county we never know what people are going through what they're dealing with so let's pray the Lord will help them amen and God will just meet with us tonight pray for our young folks as they meet God will meet with them and let's pray for one another in the name of the Lord our heavenly father God we again want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here in the house of the Lord on this Wednesday evening. God, I thank you for everyone, Lord, here in the service tonight. Thank you for all the young people that are in the service there as well. Pray that you'll meet with us, meet with them, and God, help us all tonight, Lord, that we may hear from heaven. God, that you'll touch our hearts, our lives. Help us, Lord, to be what we need to be for the cause of Christ. Lord, we know we're living in a dark world, but God, you said that we are to let our light so shine that uh, they may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Pray, Lord, that our light will shine. Oh, God, that they might see Christ. And, Lord, they might see hope in him. And, Father, tonight, we do pray for all the requests that have been made known. Lord, that you'd touch all the sick. God, we ask you to bless them, help them. God, meet every need in their lives, Father. God, I pray for the Rochesters tonight. I pray, uh, Lord, for little Chloe, God, that you'd help her, God, give her uh, Lord, ease, I pray, and God, give her grace, and God, give her family grace, and uh, Lord, God, comfort them, strengthen them, Lord, in these days, and Lord, we're thanking you for what you're going to do there, and oh, God, we pray tonight, Father, that you'll just meet with us, and God, stir in our hearts, and bless, and help us tonight, Father, Lord, we pray for our missionaries, we ask you to bless them, and oh, God, protect them, and God, supply their need, and Lord, thank you for the many souls that are being saved, God, as they uh, carry on the work that you have called them to do. Lord, I pray for all of our young people in our church. God, many have gone back to school and everyone else is getting ready to go back. And God, I just pray you keep your hand on them. God, protect them. And, and God, help them in a great way this year. Lord, give them a great year. Lord, I pray for our school here that you'd bless. And Lord, we thank you for our staff and their families. I ask you to bless them. I pray, uh, Lord, for all of our students and their families, God. And that you'd bless, Lord, in their lives. Lord, especially, I pray, and Lord, if there's those that are not saved, that God, they'll get saved. And, Father, we can see their families saved, God. Lord, we need you here tonight. We thank you, God, for being so good to us and loving us. And, Lord, we do pray for our country, Lord God. Help America. Help our leaders, dear Lord. Please, Father. God, we know that you can. And we're asking you, Lord, to move in a mighty way, God, throughout this uh, election, God, and I know that, Lord, whatever happens, it'll be, uh, Lord, according to your will, we're just praying, God, that you'd help us, uh, Lord, to do what we need to do, and stand where we need to stand, and, oh, God, help us, I pray. Thank you, God, again, for the privilege to be here tonight. Lord, I pray you bless every home here at Victory. God, touch those that are discouraged. God, touch those who are sick, and, oh, God, meet every need in every family, Father. 
Thank you now, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And then, God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, if you have your hymn book again, just turn back over to number 74, Kneel at the Cross. Christ will meet you there. It's good to be here on a Wednesday night. I appreciate you being here in the service. And uh, trust that God will help us tonight as we study the word of the Lord again. If you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 71 tonight. Psalm 71. Don't forget now, next Wednesday night, uh, Living in Victory, the youth will be taking over the service here. And so we're looking forward to that. Amen. Next Wednesday night. So be much in prayer for that. Also, uh, be sure to start praying. I hope you've been praying for our revival starting on the 30th of September. Brother Leonard Fletcher will be with us. And then uh, the Joy Heirs will be with us singing each night. Looking forward to that. And uh, so let's do pray for revival. Amen. Psalm 71. I want to begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Cast me not off in the time of old age. 
Forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him. Persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high, who hast done great things, O God, who is like unto thee. Thou, which hast showed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. Father, thank you tonight, God, for the privilege again to be able to open our Bibles here in the house of God, or to be able to read from the word of the Lord. And I pray to God that you would bless uh, the reading of the word to our hearing. And Lord, we know that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And Lord, I pray you'd help me tonight for just a little while. Lord, that I might be used of thee, God, to be a help to your people. Lord, that you'd stir us, and God, help us, encourage us. And bless us, Lord, in these days. God, how we need your touch tonight. Thank you, Father, again for everyone in the building. Those who are watching, thank you for our young people. Pray you just meet with us tonight, Lord. And all that you do, we'll thank you, we'll praise you. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I want us to look at these verses tonight. And I want to preach on this thought, the Lord our God. Now this psalm, of uh, the psalm that we have read tonight is to believe to have been written in his later years of life. We could kind of see that in the verses that we read when he said, Oh God, don't forget me when I'm gray-headed and old. Amen. And uh, certainly there's some of us tonight that might be able to identify with that verse. Uh, but we certainly want the Lord to help us. Amen. But of course, David, as he is writing this psalm, and again, I believe he's uh, getting in the later years of his life, but yet there's one thing that he is doing. And he is meditating on the goodness of the Lord. You know, I can imagine how David may have felt as he got near to the end of, uh, of his days, but no doubt that he reflected on all the times that God had showed himself mighty in his life. Amen. And uh, few have enjoyed the victories that, or faced the battles that David uh, faced, and yet he was mindful uh, of the Lord. And of course, we know by studying the life of David that his life was one that had known great joy as well as great defeat. And you see, our lives tonight, our lives may not be as dramatic as the life of David, uh, but uh, we'd all have to agree this evening that God has been good to us as well tonight. Amen. And uh, so David, nearing the end of his life, realized some things about the Lord that would be beneficial not only uh, for David to think about, but be beneficial for you and I to think about, whether we're in our younger days, mid-years, or our last of our years, uh, 
how David knew something about God and it helped him in his life. Amen. And so I want us to look tonight at a few things of, about the Lord our God that David saw. First of all, he saw the Lord God as a God of peace. Amen. Look at verse number one again. He said, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. And then in verse number five, he said, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. And so David had found one that he could trust in, one that he could believe in. And the one that he trusted and the one that possessed hope for him in his life. Amen. Even in David's day, there were people that were putting their trust in other things and other people. Brother Mike talked about it, I believe it was this past Sunday, when uh, talking about idols. And there are people that got so many idols. And of course, in David's day, they had the same thing. But David had learned to rely upon the Lord and upon the Lord only. Amen. Because he knew that God had the ability to do whatever needed to be done in his life. And he was beginning to reflect on that as he looked at his life. Amen. He had witnessed the mighty hand of God too many times to doubt the Lord even in his old age. Amen. And of course, we're living in a time where people are seeking for some means of security. They want to be secure. They want to feel secure. Amen. And they're trusting in a lot of different things and a lot of different areas to try to have that secure feeling. But I want to say this evening, there's nothing more secure than being saved by the grace of God and being in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad regardless of what happens, we are safe and secure in Him. Amen. And so there are people that are trusting and looking in many different other ways. Amen. There are a lot of people trusting in their own abilities or the abilities of others. But few are really finding real peace and security in their life outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad tonight I've got one that I know I can trust. That I'm, He's one that you can always trust. He's always uh, uh, there for you. He's never failed me yet. And I do not believe he's going to fail me this close to home. Amen. Thank God he's the one that we're trusting. He's the one that David was trusting in. He was reflecting upon how the goodness of God, the peace of God that he had in his life. Amen. Hey, I am confident in the Lord's ability to take care of me, to care for me, to, to have everything that I need as I progress through this life. Thank God he's provided for me, Brother Ray, thus far. I don't think he's going to fail me now. Amen. I don't believe he will. And I know sometimes, and I, I know maybe it's just me, but as I get older and I get to thinking, you know, I know I'm not going to be able to pastor forever. I'm not going to be able uh, to do all these things forever. And one of these days, it's going to come a day that I'm going to have to uh, get out of the way. And oh, I dread that day. Say amen right there. And then I get to boy, the devil say, yeah, you're going to really mess up then because you're going to be starved to death. You ain't never going to make it. You got no retirement. You got no 401k. Hey, but I got a God in heaven that knows exactly where I am. Amen. And he can take care of every need that we have in our lives. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm trusting him. Amen. David was trusting in the Lord. I'm telling you tonight we can have hope tonight in confidence in our Lord. Psalm 146 verse 5, the psalmist said, happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Hey, if you've got hope in the Lord and your peace is in the Lord, you can be happy, amen? Happy is that man. Titus chapter 2, verse number 13, said we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, amen? I mean, with such peace and such confidence and such hope as we have, how could we not have peace in, even in the midst of our, our troublesome days? Amen. 
David found the Lord as he begins to reflect back over his life. And he found the Lord our God, a God of peace. But not only a God of peace, but secondly, he saw him as a God of protection. Amen. Protection. I believe we need protection more than we ever have before now. Look at verse number two. He said, deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Look at verse four. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. And so David is seeing God as a God of protection. Amen. Now David, if David knew anything about the protecting hand of God, it, it is him. You look at his life, at the many things that David endured in his life. He had been delivered several times by the Lord in his life. He knew what it was to face adversity. He knew what it was to face situations that were beyond his control. And it was, and it's beyond our comprehension how a little shepherd boy could take on a man of war. But he did. And God gave him the victory. God delivered him. Amen. A, just a little young shepherd boy, but he defeated a great and mighty giant by the name of Goliath. And he knew he could do it because God had delivered him before. This was not the first time that he had seen the hand of God in his life. He had seen the hand of God with a lion and with a bear. He had already seen what God could do. And he knew God could take care of that uncircumcised Philistine. Amen. And time and time again, God delivered him while Saul hunted him down as an animal. During the time of Absalom's rebellion, God was there to care for David and to deliver him from those who sought his life. And now in his old age, David remains confident that he serves a God that is still able to protect him and take care of him. Amen. Hey, I believe he's able, don't you? I believe we serve a God who is able, well able, to take care of us. Hallelujah. Now, I've never faced a giant on the battlefield with a slingshot. I'm not interested in doing that no way. I have never, to my knowledge, I have never had an army of a king seeking for my life. Amen. I have never been forced into the wilderness to live in a cave somewhere. Amen. But God has kept his hand on our lives. God has cared for us. God has protected us. Amen. I, I believe this tonight. I believe if we knew every situation where God has brought his hand of protection in our life, it would scare us to death. I know many years, when, when me and Deb, we, we went to Germany, we took Ocean and Brooke with us, and Brooke was just about two or three years old, and uh, Ocean was getting ready to start school at five years old, and, and uh, we took off uh, to Germany not knowing nothing. No real wisdom given to us by those who had gone before us. We just blindly went. And years later, when I was sitting on the board with uh, Brother Jerry Mullendore and we would interview missionaries and I got to seeing everything that they got involved in, it scared me to death because we really were not prepared for what could have happened over there. I mean, if, if Debbie and I had got killed while we were in Germany, and the two kids had been left by themselves. How do you think they would have got to back to America? It would have been bad. It would have been a bad situation. Now, of course, we, people have uh, learned some things and made arrangements, got power of attorney and all that stuff before people go to the field. Hey, we didn't have none of that. We didn't know nothing. And after I got back, Brother Mike, I was here at this church. I was safe and secure. But then I got to thinking about that. It, it scared me to death. I thought, how awful. But then I thank God that he kept his hand on us. Amen. I'm glad God keeps his hand on dumb people. Say amen right there. I mean, but we just blindly went by faith. And 
But God protected us. I'm thankful. And if we knew, if we knew every instance of God's protective hand, it would probably cause us to have a nervous breakdown. Amen. Hey, I say, where would we be tonight if it hadn't have been for God's hand on our life? No telling. And I'm sure all of us have got stories where we could have been killed or something bad could have happened and God protected us from it. But how many more times where we didn't know did God do the same thing? Amen. We are kept protected by his power. Praise God. I like what the Bible said, 2 Chronicles 16 <laughs> and verse number 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Praise God. He's, if, you're, if you're one of his children, his heart's toward you tonight. Amen. And he's going to show himself strong on your behalf. The psalmist, he said in Psalm 34, 7, that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Amen. Thank God for his mighty hand of protection. Here's David. He's reflecting. He's looking back. And as he thinks about all that God has done in his life, he sees that the Lord our God is a God of peace. He is a God of protection. But then thirdly tonight, he is a God of provision. I like this. Verse 3, look at it. Be thou my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Amen. Now David is one that knew what it was like to live life on the run. He knew what it was like to hide and dwell in caves. And in all the difficult and, and fearful days, there was something constant in his life. He always found refuge in the Lord. Hallelujah. Whether he was in the cave of Adullam or wherever he was at, God was his refuge. God was his, his help. Amen. God was his provision. And he knew that the Lord was there. And uh, he may have been hiding for his life, but there was always peace and security in the Lord, no matter where we are. And he always found, when he's hiding in a cave, he did find somewhere even better to hide. He hid himself in the Lord. He said, I, I continually resort. He said, for thou art my rock and my fortress. He found somewhere that was safe and secure, and that was in his God. Amen. Oh, listen. He was his rock. He was his fortress. He was his high tower in the time of need in his life. Hey, I'm glad we serve the same God tonight. I'm glad it's a blessing to know that we have such a place as well. We can be hid in him, amen? When it seems like everything is falling apart, I'm glad, praise God, we can resort to our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? We can always turn to the rock, which is higher than we are. Psalm 61 in verse number 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than we are. Amen? Or higher than I. Oh, listen, I'm glad we've got somewhere we can flee to when things get bad. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Psalm 91, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buttress. Praise God. I'm glad there is a place that we can go and know for sure that it will be a place of rest in the midst of the storms of our lives. Amen. Tonight I say along with David, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, thank God for the Lord our God, who is our peace. Amen. Who is our provision. Who is our all in all tonight. He's a God of peace. He's a God of protection. 
He's a God of provision. Then I say he's a God of preservation. Look at verse number 6. He says, By thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. Amen. He's a God of preservation. He said, by thee have I been holding up from the womb. You are the one that brought me forth into this world. David had not reached the place in his life by mere chance or by mere coincidence. God had brought him there. God had done what he had done in his life. It was that he had been held up by the Lord, amen. He had just not stumbled upon it into all this. God brought him into it, praise God. I'm glad the Lord have blessed him and God used him in a great way. The phrase, by thee have I been holding up, it has the idea of leaning or laying upon. It, it has the idea of resting or supporting or upholding. It means to sustain and establish. In other words, David said that his life was preserved by the awesome hand of Almighty God. The Lord had kept him, and David was exactly where God desired for him to be. Amen. Hey, he's a God of preservation. You see, each of us tonight, have our lives have been preserved. Amen. I know there's a lot of people, they're not preserved, they're pickled. I like preserved. That makes you sweet. Say amen. But we have all been held up by the mighty hand of God. Hey, we're not here tonight by just mere chance. We just didn't happen in here. We just didn't happen upon this place. Hey, we are here by God's design. Amen. And we haven't achieved the success that you have by mere chance. God has blessed you. God has upheld you. God has given you what you have. Hey, listen, David is praising God and reflecting on what God has done in his life. It was the Lord, amen. And we are who and where we are because of God's upholding hand in our life. Amen. He has established our lives, and I'm glad that not only has he established, he continues to sustain them day by day. And whenever the day comes and he don't want to sustain us down here, He'll call us home. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I, I, I think about this. I'm glad that God knows each of us personally. If you're saved, he knows you. I know my sheep. I call them by name. Amen. He knows who we are. And uh, he created us individually. And we are his workmanship. Amen. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. In other words, he said, I already had something for you. I knew who you were. I knew what you were going to do. I knew all about you. Oh, that's a scary thought, though, ain't it? He already knew everything about us. Amen. I still believe that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by the hand of God. I mean, birth is a miracle. I, I cannot believe, I cannot believe for the life of me that that democratic bunch of liberal socialists is allowing abortions to take place right outside their convention. Sickening. When God has said, I have before I formed thee in the womb. It was God that brought them into being. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it, it, it's, it's sickening to think about all the things that are happening. Uh, but I'm glad God, I'm, I'm glad God helped my mama. Amen. I'm glad my mama had good sense. Praise God. I'm glad my mama wanted to keep her babies. Woo! Glory, hallelujah anyway. I'm, even though the problems I've been in my life many times, I'm glad she still had me, amen, and didn't take me out of here, praise God. But anyway, I'm glad that we've been made by the hand of God, and God has sustained us. 
Psalm 139 verse 5 says, Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Amen. David said he's a God. He's a God of peace. He's a God of protection. He's a God of provision. He's a God of preservation. And then I say he's a God of persuasion. Look at verse 7. He said, I am as a wonder unto many. But thou art my strong refuge. Amen. Now, what is it that he is saying here in this verse? David said, I was a wonder unto many. I, I believe that means that he was a sign. He was a, a miracle. He was a special display of God's power and God's ability in his life and what God could do with a man that was yielded to him. Amen. I believe that tonight God worked through him and God helped him. And David said that my life is a wonder. He said, I'm as a wonder unto many. And David's life stood as a, a clear testimony of the power of, of God a, a, and a testimony to the provision of God in a man's life. Oh, listen, what a testimony he had. Amen. Hey, David's life, you could agree, his life was anything but ordinary. I mean, he didn't just get up, grow up, get married, get a job, live his life, and then go away. No, no. There was something different about his life. I mean, it was not a normal life. His life was one that displayed a miracle, one miracle right behind the other, how God worked in his life, what God did in his life. I mean, and no wonder he said, my life was a wonder to many. It was probably a wonder to himself. As he began to look back and see all that God did for him and all the Lord worked in his life. Amen. Oh, it's amazing what God did through his life. Hey, our lives may not be a great wonder like David's life, but I guarantee you one thing. Your life, it makes an influence on somebody. Amen. All of us. No man. The Bible said no man lives to himself. No man dies to himself. I mean, listen, we, 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 we are an influence, either a good influence or a bad influence, one or the other. And it may not have the far-reaching impact that David did, but I guarantee you it impacts your world. Amen. I, I think I got a thing in my office, if I, if I can remember it right, my kids gave me, and it said, to the, to the world, you are just a dad, but to us, you are our world. Amen. I mean, I may not be much to anybody else, but there is a little circle that I have great influence over. Amen. You do as well. Same thing with you. We may not be far-reaching uh, like David's life was, but I guarantee you there's a group of people that's watching you. There are people that watch you, and you're influencing them, amen, from day to day. Hey, our life can be a display of what God can do in our life just like he did in David's life, Amen. And sometimes if you live for God, you're viewed as a fanatic. You know, you're, you're, you're foolish. Uh, but I'm, listen, I'd rather be a fanatic for Jesus. I'd rather be labeled a fanatic than anything else. Amen. Oh, listen. But the one who lives a consistent life of the Lord, you do not go unnoticed. People notice you. They watch in your life. Amen. Hey, the world is watching us more than we want to believe. They're watching us, amen. And God is using all of you to bear witness of what he can do in a person's life that trusts him, amen. Hey, the world don't understand it, but that's not for them to understand. It's just for them to do what they did to David. He was just a wonder. They just couldn't figure him out, man. Look at this guy. Look what he's been through. Look what, and God just keeps blessing him. God keeps helping him. Oh, it looked like he was finished, but God brought him up. It looks like it was over, and then God put him on the throne. Amen. Oh, listen, he's a God of peace. He's a God of protection. He's a God of provision. He's a God of persuasion. And then I want to say he's a God of perfection. Look at verse 6 again. He said, by thee have I been holding up from, my mother, from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. 
And then verse number 8. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thine honor all the day. Oh, David is looking back at his life. David is overwhelmed by all that he saw that God had done for him. I, I, I know all of us tonight, we can look back at our life. We, can, we could be overwhelmed as well. Look where you were and look where God's brought you. Look what you've been through. You didn't think you was going to make it, but God brought you through. Amen. He's not done with you. Amen. And David, as he looks over his life, he's just overwhelmed by what he saw. He realized that his life was a life that had been touched by the hand of Almighty God. Amen. When nobody was mindful of him, when nobody cared for him, you remember David said, no man cared for my soul, but I'm glad there was one that was always caring for him, and that was God. Amen. Tonight, just think about it. Think about your life. I, I challenge you to do this. Just spend some time alone with God and look back over your life and consider what God has done for you. <laughs> think back over it and remember all the times that God has been there for you. Amen. And then there's been times he's been there for you and you didn't even realize it. Consider the times the storm has struck your family or your life. And you didn't think you'd survive it. You didn't think you'd make it through. But you look back and God brought you through. God's grace was sufficient. God's help was there. God brought in help, amen, and resources. I'm glad that God is able to do that. Why? Because he's a God of perfection. Amen. Each of us tonight, at one time we was lost and undone on our way to hell. But God came by your way. God rescued you where you was at. God saved you by his marvelous grace. God laid his hand upon you, delivered you, and brought you up out of that horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set your feet on a rock. Thank God, give you a song in your heart, and praise unto God. And David is saying here, I look back, and I just want to praise God continually for all that he has done in my life. Amen. Tonight, surely, all of us can look back, and we can rejoice in the goodness of the Lord in our life. I look back several times. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it through. But God brought us through. God gave us grace. God worked in our lives. Amen. And tonight, we just need to be like David. Let's just think back. And when we do, I guarantee you one thing. It may cause you just to stop and say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. How many times did it look like it was going to be the end? But God showed up. Amen. God showed up. I like that little phrase, but God. Oh, it was all over, but God. Didn't know he was going to make it, but God. Amen. And the Lord is able to, do, to sustain us and help us all the way, praise God, all the way to the end. Amen. Father, tonight we thank you for your word. God, thank you for the encouragement, Lord, that it gives my heart. God, to read after a man like David. God, to read all that he is praising you for. For he looks back at his life. And he sees the hand of God. The miracles of God. The grace of God. The goodness of God. In all of his life. And Lord, we all tonight, we know enough about David to know that. Lord, he had some dark days. There were some bad times, but Lord, through every single thing, you sustained him, you helped him, you preserved him, you brought him through. God, I'm glad that you'll do the same for us. And I pray, Lord, we just look back and say thank you, God, for how good you've been to us. And knowing, Lord, that what you have done in the past, that you're still able to do in the days to come of our lives. Lord, we have no idea what the future holds. I'm glad you do. Oh, God, you'll help us and take us through. Thank you for what you've already done. 
Thank you for the grace, God, that you have given to many folks here in our church. God, I think of many families in our church, Lord, have been through some hard days. Oh, we prayed to many, many prayers for many people. And God, you brought them through. Lord, you gave them grace. God, you delivered them. And God, what a joy, what a blessing it is to see your grace in their lives. God, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for what you're going to do. Bless, I pray in Jesus' name. While we stand, our heads are bowed tonight. Everybody faces different trials, different situations. But I'm glad there's a God in heaven that, can, that has helped, is helping, and thank God will help in the times to come. Amen. Lord, thank you again for this service. Thank you for this week thus far. Pray you bless the remainder of the week. Bless the Lord's day coming. God, meet with us. I pray that some precious soul will be saved. Thank you. God, for that precious lady who saved last Sunday. Oh, God, thank you for your convicting power. Lord, I pray you'll continue to deal with others. and God, that we can see them saved. Bless your people. Help us to live our lives that people might see the grace of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Sure appreciate you being here tonight. And uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. Pray for one another. Um, do pray for uh, all these that are sick among the church. I know we got several having some tests done. And uh, so remember them in prayer. And uh, I know that God's able. He's done it before. He can do it again. Amen. And uh, so we're glad to have been able to see you tonight. Don't forget now next Wednesday night, Living in Victory will be here taking the service. I always look forward to that.